James Holder, IFL TV, in association with Matt Christian Marbao. With me, I've got undefeated Scottish prospect Joe Ham. We're at the press conference today for Kirill Reliki taking on WPA super champion Ricky Burns. Firstly, how are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, my man, not too bad. Good, good. let's talk a little bit about the main event. How do you see Ricky Burns getting on? I think it's, it's again, the last week, he's getting into the unknown. He doesn't know what he's going up against, but against where Ricky is. The more experienced guys, you know what I mean? It's just him that use experience and use all the rounds and yeah. that he's picked up over the years and I think that should be enough to get him through. I said, Rick, Ricky Hatton really rates Kirill really very highly. From what I've heard of Ricky, he expects to really push Ricky Burns that little bit further, but it's awkward when you, someone is the unknown and all you're going on is the sort of box rec record and sort of little YouTube videos. Yeah, definitely. He says, obviously, Ricky Hatton's going to uh, talk his fighter so much up. It's his fighters, you know what I mean? You're not going exactly yeah. going to say he's going to go in and go get beat. He's not experienced enough, you know what I mean? Yeah. But anybody who's knocked 19 people at like 21 fights can obviously punch it, yeah. any, no matter what level. So, obviously, it's a dangerous fight, but I think at this time, I just think Ricky's just a bit better. What do you think of that added pressure that Adrian Broner's in town? He's potentially going to face Ricky Burns next in December. Does that add a carrot or does that add more pressure to Ricky Burns in your mind? I, for anybody it does, but Ricky's always been laid back. Do you know what I mean? I don't think anybody Eton even gets to him. He's always said that. He just takes a fight as each one as he come and then I don't think Broner's going to make that big a difference, him being there, do you know what I mean, to his performance. But I think it'll be an interesting fight when they me. You're 8-0 and now, building up a good bit of momentum and a good bit of reputation here in Scotland. Do you think we can see you come down and box maybe in England in, in, in over the next sort of year or so? Well, that's 8-0 and, oh and I've had five knockouts and obviously this is my ninth on this show and then out a couple of weeks later, then again at the end of the year. So hopefully by 11-0 oh by the end of the year and then as of next year push on to some, some titles, you know what I mean? There's only, you can only beat who's put in front of you at the moment. But I, I, next year I feel progressing towards Commonwealth and hopefully towards British by the end of the year next year. We always speak about this, but it really is the big cards from your guys' point of view are very dependent on these big TV shows coming back. So it puts more pressure on Ricky to keep on churning out the wins, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Because if it's Ricky, we're only in hotel shows, small hole shows. But mm -hmm. I suppose that's how everybody starts off. Do you know what I mean? You're not going to know everybody is lucky enough to get straight into the limelight. But with him, he's, uh, he brings great crowds to Scotland and everybody gets behind him. So just hopefully he maintains his belt, do you know what I mean? And the worst he gets and goes and beats Brona, then he brings back more big nights into Glasgow, do you know what I mean? Because without him, it's going to take another couple of years before we all build up. Your dad is your main trainer, would that be right? Yeah. Your dad does the bulk of your training. How is that father relationship and what's it like training with, you, with your dad? Do you call him dad when you're in the gym or do you call him Joe? No, I call him Joe. Just, uh, <laughs> he's always been, he's been my coach right through since I was an amateur, since I was a wee boy, so it's not as if it's like a, a new thing, do you know what I mean? But it's, it works great. We're undefeated and he's an amateur, it worked well, but as a pro, everything's gone well and we're progressing each fight and we're looking better. You made a good transition from the amateurs to the pros. I know how important it is to keep winning and keep that O, which effectively helps your marketability going forward from there. Yeah, definitely. It's the most important thing. You've got to remain undefeated. As an, as an amateur, you lose fights, but amateur boxing is like your apprenticeship. You learn, you travel all the world, box all the best people. You win some, you lose some, but it's when you turn professional, that's when you're, That's when it really matters that you keep winning. Listen, we're expecting a good contest. Hopefully everything goes all right and we see you at the weigh-in on Thursday. Yeah. I wish you the best of luck with well, the show. Hopefully, because uh, my opponent has just pulled out this week. I've just on hearing Tuesday. this. I didn't yeah. want to know you wanted to speak about this yeah. as, as, as I didn't know whether the new opponent's heard, been sorted. We heard, sorted. We heard yesterday, so they said we'll just try to find a new opponent, but I'm sure we should get something. I'm pretty sure that you'll yeah. be okay, you know hopefully. what I mean? So if not, I can yeah. make me get down yeah. to the weight. I've got a bit of a bad eye at the minute. You're lucky it's my eyes playing me up, you know what I mean? sitting there like Stevie Wonder that press conference. When I come in and people are looking at me with the glasses on, I think they think, is this geezer for real? Medical, all right. That's all I'm going to say. It's medical. So you say. On on that note, Joe, I wish you the best of luck. What you're doing. Thank you for all the time. Appreciate it. Catch us on. Thank you, Joe. Cheers.